Hi guys, it's Toby and welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We are sketching outside today. I've come to a tiny little village. I've done a couple of videos in this village now. This is Toesland and done a couple of videos because it's really lovely. Um, and uh, what I'm doing, I'm sat now opposite a church, which I will show you here. And the video today is all about making sketching outside totally, totally approachable. Really simple processes. I'll show you everything I'm using. Um, I'll show you how to get your scene um, right in your mind first, how to get that anchor measurement down so that it all goes right, except nothing ever goes right outside. So forget perfection and just enjoy yourself with these simple processes. If you want more of that kind of ethos, more of that kind of style of sketching loose to enjoy yourself, then check out my course, sketchloose.co.uk. Um, there are literally hundreds of people there now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and the reviews have been great. So I'd love to have more people come over there, enjoy and share the sketch loose, sketch loose mantra ideology of having fun and just developing our own style because we want to. Now with that, let's get into sketching outside. How we do it, what do we need and all of that jazz. So the first question is what should we bring outside? And honestly, you really don't need much. Um, you can just bring out a sketchbook and a pen and I've shown you that kind of thing with um, just doing really simple ink sketches. When we're adding a bit more complexity, perhaps using watercolours like today, it's great to have a little surface. Now I've got this, you can hear it's nice and hard. It's actually a little case by Ikea, costs a little over £10 in the UK and it's really wonderful. And why is it wonderful? Well, it unzips here. And not only do we have a hard case where we can pop our paper, we also have a load of storage inside. And inside the storage, if I just turn it around, apologies for banging the camera there. You can see I keep some paper, which is awesome. I've got a few different things. I've got some sketchbooks that I've made just by um, stitching together some paper, really lightweight and loose. And that way, you know, it's quality paper. This is what um, I'd be using for like a, a linear little fun little scene as well. This is a, a block of paper. On the other side, I've got my watercolors, my normal set of watercolors. I'm gonna get them out now because we will be using them. I normally keep my little water pot in there as well, just expandable. Again, I've got that out because I'm gonna be using it. Um, carry around my little pot of water along with that. What else we got inside? Loads of little storage bits. So I've got the kind of array of pens you probably expect me to carry. Got three different fountain pens because they've got different inks in. One's uh, waterproof, two are water soluble, one of them's black and one of them's brown. I've got two um, travel brushes. They unclip like this, really handy, keeps the brush safe. Doesn't mean, doesn't let it get damaged. It's got two of those, one in a size six and one in a size, uh, this is a size 12. Oh, dropping everything today. One, this one's a size 12. I've got a water brush um, for quicker, easier sketching. Uh, I've got a brush pen and a few day pen. So loads and loads in here. Now I'm just gonna get my bits out. So I've got this little sketchbook eyed up for today. I want my fountain pen and two brushes. Then I could just close up my case, pop it back. And just like magic, I've got my surface ready. So you can see my view in front of me here and you can see it is absolutely ready-made for a beautiful, easy little sketch. Why is this beautiful, easy sketch? Well, it's naturally framed by these two hedges. It's got amazing light on it with the shadow also on these hedges. It's got no perspective. So it's a, a linear sort of zero perspective scene. And what do I mean by that? Well, look, all the angles are at 90 degrees or 45 degrees. They're how they're supposed to be and they're all symmetrical. And that makes it really easy as a starter when you're first getting outside. Because what you don't want to be doing is over challenging yourself with these complex, challenging scenes when actually getting outside is already enough of a challenge sometimes. Having found our scene, what do we need to do? Well, we need to get comfy. Now, I could carry this around, actually, I can stand up with this and it's okay. But, you know, if you can find a seat, even better. But what do I do? Well, look, I've got this. This is my magic, uh, my magic seat, my my companion which I can just carry around with me it means basically wherever there's a scene I can have a seat so having a really simple solution like that um, I highly highly recommend why don't we just start sketching now outside it's hard why is it hard because when we take a photo we get a frame so a photo of my scene today beautifully framed from that it's really easy to work out exactly how to sketch the scene Alas, the real world doesn't work that way. Our vision is huge, our paper is small. So 
I really recommend adding in a step here, adding in a step to our normal processes. And what is that step? It's a thumbnail. So actually, let's just, in our paper here, do a tiny thumbnail. And here we can work out how to measure, how to get our scene sort of working for us before we set out on our big piece. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna try and get my main object into the scene and uh, not have it disappear, have it the right size and not have it too big, have it fit. Because often we, we sketch and we, we end up making something either way too big, or way too small. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna take an anchor measurement. So an anchor measurement is where we find a key part of the scene. So in this instance, I'm gonna say the bottom half of our church is, a, is our anchor measurement. And we've got this kind of pillar in the middle. Now everything we can now measure from that. So as long as we get this the right size in our scene, now if we, we go, well, then the tr kind of triangle of it is about that big, and then the top is probably about that big again. So look, I've made this too big. So just through that one anchor measurement, I can discover, you know what? I've already gone too big and this scene isn't gonna fit. This is a thumbnail though, so I can just decide to shorten it, shorten that and shorten that. And now I can just really quickly do a check of how my thumbnail's gonna fit now. And so we go and just grab our key shapes, then there's the triangle, then on top we've got this kind of uh, rectangle and a triangle. What else is key? Little circle, little ellipse here and there. Then to the side, we've got some little shapes to the other side. I've actually got my bush coming in to my view here, and another bush here. And then also at the bottom, we've got the fence just coming in. Is the fence going to work in our scene? Well, look, I think the fence is actually going to work. I think the fence looks really interesting in our scene. But what's the problem? It doesn't fit. So again, look, my thumbnail has really helped me work out my composition. And I've made mistakes. I've made loads of mistakes. I made the mistake at the beginning. I made the mistake at the end. So we can now take that on board and try again. So let's do another thumbnail. Now this time, let's remember our anchor measurement was too big. Our anchor part of the scene was too big. So if we make it smaller this time, and I make it start a little bit higher so I can fit in this, this fence. And then hopefully, if I just remember my shapes, look at my scene, look at this as well. And what we'll end up with is something which fits really nicely. And then we've got a kind of layers of bushes and I'll talk a bit more about layers as we go through this so that it makes sense to everyone what I'm talking about with layers. Layers is a really great way of thinking for sketching. Um, and then we can just pop in our fence and look, now we have a lovely composition. There's one more thing I want to use my thumbnail for, one more thing, and that's the shadow. So where in our scene is the shadow? Well, it's gonna be in these front layers. So our church, beautifully well lit. Our sky, light and blue. It's getting late now it's about seven o'clock so, so it's not quite got that crisp blue but the shadow is coming forward it's actually darker here than it is here so if we do one layer of hatching there two layers of hatching here and you know what yeah that's it that that I think when I look at it now I think yeah that's my shadow that's that's working well and I can remember that for my bigger piece I can remember this shadow and I can really work on it so now we can do our real scene. Um, so let's go for it. And what do you think the first step is in our real scene? It is, of course, shapes. And we cheated. <laughs> and it's never cheating, is it? It's just being sensible. We've got our shapes here. And I'm gonna create this kind of sketchbook page of my day. And that is a thumbnail, a thumbnail, and then a, a bigger flowing sketch over here. And I can just remember, right, this is our key measurement. So let's get our key measurement in to, to anchor the whole scene and make it not too big. And then I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to other things because I'm confident. I'm confident now. I'm going to pay attention to the textures as I'm doing the shapes because shapes have texture. You know, it's no good trying to draw an old church and then at the end try and add in the, the feeling of old. No, when we're doing these first shapes, we've got to look and go, look, it's got these kind of big brick-like textures. So these first shapes, you know what they need as well? They need that sort of big brick-like texture. And then at the bottom, it's got all these sort of pebble, pebble-dashed feels. Now there's something I didn't practice here. 
got a few gravestones and a bench and things like that in our scene. And why not add them in? They are, again, just simple shapes. And we can be confident just adding them in because we've warmed up with our thumbnails. We know they're going to fit. They're not going to struggle. Don't need to add all of them in, but maybe we add a few, maybe three or four. And look, we can overlap our old lines as well. This is sketching. It doesn't matter if things are layered in the wrong way. Um, we can overlap, we can have fun, we can play around with our scene. So look, there's my gravestones now added in. What else have we got? We've got this little building in the back, just an edge of it. Then we can move on to our other shapes. Now this, this is a nice and hard line actually in our scene, but let's still give it some character. Let's make it wobble because that helps the whole scene feel old. Then we've got our, our top shape and we can still pop that in with the triangle at the top as well. And again, just getting this, getting this texture in. Again, there's extra details we can now notice. So we, we can start building in our slightly smaller shapes, like our bell. Just things that we, as we notice, not, not excessive detail, but as we notice it, as we see it as a shape, which we didn't practice here, we can add it in. Another little shape here. And look, again, we can notice the extra touch of detail. Same here, and the extra little touch of detail. So the extra kind of shapes around the shapes. Now, this is where we're gonna start thinking about layers. So we're still on shapes, we're still on step one, but we're thinking about how do we build the shapes as we change layers? And what do I mean by layers? Well, this is one layer. This is all in one sort of part of our vision. So we can call this kind of the middle ground. The background, is basically in this, it's just the sky. We can't see any distant trees, but that would be another layer. If we could see trees, that would be a layer, and then the sky would be another background layer. So each layer is a kind of place in space. And as we come closer and closer, we are changing layers. So with that in mind, let's just sketch in layers. So our next layer forward is this lovely gate that we practiced. So we can just come forward and we can sketch that over the top and it doesn't matter that it's over the top it doesn't matter that it's layering up it doesn't matter that it's layered wrong in the sense that in reality you can't see through the gate i mean you can see through the gaps but you can't see through the metal it doesn't overlap like this that's fine we've also then got this distant bush this more sort of distant bush this one here and that is part of this same closer layer and within that we can just again Think about the texture. It's a simple shape, it's a, a rectangle. It's got some little bits of uh, fence poking out the bottom here we can add in, but we can think about texture as well. Then within that same layer, we've got another bush, which is just over here. So we can just add that in. And again, that one's a little bit higher. So I'm gonna make it higher than that one. It comes across. Then we've got yet another layer, and that is the last shape we're gonna add in. It's a bit taller. I'm gonna exaggerate that tallness. It's only taller because of the perspective, which I said there wasn't any in this scene, but of course there's always a bit of perspective. So this one's taller because it's closer. So because it's closer and it's higher than my eye level, it ends up looking taller in our vision. If if that's too confusing, for this, for the, the purpose of this simple sketch, just ignore it. Just either make it taller, make it the same height, or don't worry about it at all. But just be aware that yes, there is actually, in every scene, there's always some perspective. We're always simplifying, you're always making our sort of best guess attempt. But there you go, that is what I mean by layers. And these layers are gonna become even more important as we move on. Step two, we will keep our pen out and we are doing details and shadows. And again, you guessed it, layers are gonna come in. So let's start, details we're gonna start in our lovely church. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find some of these lovely brick shapes and they're quite symmetrical. So I'm gonna find them on both sides of the church. And that just gives the church a lovely sort of unified feel. And then I'm gonna find lots of these little stones getting, just thinking, what we're thinking is texture. That is all we're talking about here with these little stones. Same here, we've got all these little little stones. And then up here, there's some more sort of bigger bricks. Now, notice my bigger bricks and things aren't perfectly matching the scene. That's fine. This is about giving the impression of this church, giving the 
the sort of foundations of it. Um, not about making a perfect count every bit, brick, make it exactly the right size, all that. No, this is about simple, about fun, about me having a nice day out, enjoying the outside, enjoying just being free to sketch wherever I want. So that's, that's all the details I think I need to do for now at least. And we can always come back. Next, details coming forward. Well, let's just make this gate make a little bit more sense. So what we can do, we can add the middle of it, we can add like a lock, something to just show that it's joining up. We can add some more boldness. So this is a key, key thing when we're thinking about uh, how to make things come forward or go back. Bold lines come forward. Notice how this bold line is suddenly, whew, it's in front, it's in a closer layer. And we can leave these wires, these metal work, we can leave them uh, sort of less intense so that we can see through. We get that effect of seeing the graves and things in the background. And I think for now, again, maybe that's all we need to do. Maybe just suggest some hinges on here and some hinges down here, just as a, a little extra. And we've got a nice little beam coming across like this as well. That kind of makes it feel more like a gate to me. But that's enough, that's enough for now. Then as we come forward, what else can we do? Well, remember how we did this hatching like this? Now this is a really lovely way, not just of, um, Sort of showing shadow but also hatching can separate out layers so to show the shadow we could just do some really simple linear hatching and now by doing linear hatching on these bushes and only these bushes in this direction they're in their own layer what we can then do is come to our our next layers forward and we can do hatching in a different direction and that separates out those layers as well. And over here we can do the same thing. And we can also just remember bold lines come forward. So to help this layer even more, we can just embolden it. So now I'm doing the wrong I'm doing the wrong bit there. Silly me. Easy to, to slip up. Don't worry about it. If you leave it there it's not going to be a problem. We just correct it by making this bit even bolder, making it stand out even more. And now, as I was going to say before I realised I was being silly, we can come and add some little details in the front. I've got lots of lovely buttercups, little daisies. Just suggest all these lovely little flowers in front. And now we've got this kind of layer, 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 all simplified. And what's the magic about this hatching? Well, the magic you'll see, not just in separating out layers, but also this enables me to leave a lot of negative space. I no longer have to add colour to these layers. They're already filled with ink. So the next part of our process is those lovely loose colours. And we can just go. So let's just go straight for it. Now, if I'm thinking about how to simplify the colours, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a nice, bold, happy, bright colour, which suggests that, that sort of brickwork on the church. And I'm going to start with that because that's going to, for me, it's an important part of our sort of scene. Obviously, it's the main focal point. And from there, we may not have to add colour in many other places. We may be able to get away with very limited colour. Or we may end up deciding, you know what, we want more and more colour. We'll see. So what I'm using here is quinacridone gold. I'm going to let it run and move. I'm going to push it down the page and just let it have some fun. I'm going to add a bit of quinacridone sienna in a nice warm colour just to get that variation. And variation is absolutely key and king and super important in, uh, in watercolours. Now, having done that, we can start examining where does the next bit of colour want to be? You know what? I'm now going to decide I do want colour in the sky because we've got all this potential negative space here and just a little flick of blue in the sky I think may just allow us to leave so much more negative space. That blue also lets us explain a few bits. So it lets us fill up here, lets us fill up this gap and keeps it connected and keeps it explained. And so let's just bring that blue round. And look, these colours are leaking together. Not a problem. This is all part of the process, letting things happen, letting them do their thing. And then we'll come back, we'll respond, we'll see what changes we want to make as a result of what the watercolours have decided they're going to do because that's what they do they they make up their own mind and 
either we can try and get stressed, well, for me, I can either try and get stressed controlling them or I can go, you know what, you do your thing, I'll do mine, and we'll, we'll compromise in the middle. And normally, uh, they're better at doing their thing. And so I, I'm really happy that I let them. Now, do you see what's happening? We've got this effect where we've got lovely bright colour pooling down and then this negative space forming a really nice um, frame. So what we can just do is observe what's happening. We said at the beginning, you know, I know I want colour here, but I don't know where else I want colour. Well, now I know I want some nice sort of lovely greens to just come down here as well. And then the, the greens and everything can be pooling down and mixing down and coming towards us. Maybe some bright yellows in here. I've not been very good at telling you what colours I'm using, have I? Uh, cobalt blue. I did mention the quinacridone gold, quinacridone sienna. This is a Hansa yellow medium. And then this green, this is a cascade green. So they're all the colours I've used so far. And I don't anticipate that I'll be using many more. I may use a couple more, but not many more. What else can we add just to bump this up? Well, look, let's get these lovely wooden posts just in a nice deep uh, sort of orangey brown. That's my quinacridone sienna. Same over here. I'm going to invent a, a post and maybe even uh, the middle won't work. I was going to do the middle, but as I touched that colour in, I realised it just won't work. Uh, something about it just didn't feel right. I'm going to punch out this gold a bit more, drop a bit more gold in here to, to sort of remove that blue. And then, you know what? A few splashes, a few more splashes here. A couple of green splashes just to fill in this negative space. And that is step three done. That is our loose colours done. So we are mostly dry. And you can see the dramatic change. This is um, really toned down. It's got so much more gentle. And we are ready, of course, to move on to step four. Now, um, most often I would probably add a bit more watercolour. But because we're outside, because of all the flowing, I actually want to just restructure a bit and then really work out, do I need more watercolour? Um, if I was certain I wanted more watercolour, I'd do it now. But actually, we're working in these layers and I really want to just get them back with all this looseness, get those layers back. And this is why I bring a few things with me. So at the beginning I mentioned I have like a Fudo pen. Fudo pen is a um, pen with a flexible nib and this one is by Tombow. And it means we can produce light lines and bold lines. Now, if you only had one pen, not a problem. You just press a little bit harder, you'll get a bold line. But what I actually really want, what I think this needs is some bold lines. So that's what we're going to do now in step four. We're going to restructure our image with some really bold lines. So I'm going to start at the back. I don't want to be too bold because I don't want this to come right the way to the front. But at the same time, I am going to exaggerate it because it is our our focal point, it's our main thing, it's the reason I'm here, the, the lovely church. So exaggerating this boldness to sort of suggest it's a bit further forward than it actually is. And also to pick out a few more of these textures. Now there's another bit that I wanted this boldness for, and that's to really um, create contrast. And what I feel this scene is missing is contrast. We've got bold lines, we've got a lot of negative space, but we've not got anything really dark. So I'm going to just take a risk and see what happens if I start making some of these areas really dark, like under the bell, like under this arch. And I think, I hope, because I can't take it away, of course, I hope that this boldness will just elevate it, will just give us something a little bit extra to look at. And that contrast will suddenly make the negative space more important, will suddenly make the light more important. Now you can come round, grab these little, um, remember we added in all these uh, gravestones. And again, here's an option, like why don't we make some of them black, some of them white. And now instead of getting lost behind this, um, uh, this complex little bit of line work, we suddenly got these contrasting black and white objects, which we can understand and see and visualise a bit more. Coming down, we've got the edge of the church, the little church building behind, which I'll hatch in as well. And I notice now a lot of my light is changing. So I have the option to change some of the shadows. Now, to make life simple for myself, 
I'm not going to. I'm only, I'm going to stick with when I was first here, and this building was bright light. I'm going to stick with that vision. As I come forward, I'm going to start now really emphasising this kind of layer effect, really emphasising with this bold line to just separate things out again. I'm going to use where these colours have gone as a new edge as well. So if we just find where our colours got to and we just go round the edge, the natural edge which has been formed by that flowing of watercolour, and there we go. So suddenly things are, for me at least, making a little bit more sense, making a bit more uh, clarity on the page. In the front, of course, we've got our flowers. I want them forward, so they're going to get nice and bold. I think, I think my vision is coming together, and I think that's enough of our extra line work. So the last bit, the very last bit, is where we, we've got our shapes, we've got our layers, we've got our, our background colour. And now we bring our, our vision, as I said, together with just some more careful touches of colour. And this time I really do mean touches. So I mean a few places only, sparingly using the colour. So I've got my, my water down the side here. And what, what things am I thinking? Well, I want to amp up a couple of things. So look at this. This doesn't make sense. This post doesn't make sense. But if we just make it bold. And we had one over here, but perhaps it's lost a little bit. So I'm just going to do a little line. And perhaps we can use that same colour just in the grass, just to suggest a few flecks of that kind of slightly burnt summer grass. Now this same colour, we don't want to just use it in one layer, just so we don't use one colour in one place. It's also not good to use it in just one layer. So I'm going to just find some places that I can sort of say, you know what, maybe there's these, these bricks which are actually quite pale, Maybe they're not, maybe they're dark, because that's what our image needs. And then maybe just to balance that out, we'll come back in with our quinacridone gold. So this was quinacridone sienna. And we'll go, you know what, some of these bricks, maybe they are nice and yellow and bright. Get some splashes in there to suggest texture as well. And then what else have we got? Well, why don't we crispen up our sky? So again, I don't want to do too much here. But we can take that lovely blue and we can just do these little flicks away. And now we've still got this, the sky and the, the, uh, the church joining. I hope you can see they're still sort of joining because we've still got the, the sense underneath, the transparency of watercolour is still underneath. You can still tell that the colours have merged. But also, just these little flicks of blue amp up the sky, don't they? They really amp up the sky. And we've got this layered effect of the sky again. And now layers are becoming a real feature of this image, which is amazing. It's great having our, our image sort of having a nice consistent feel. Again, we don't want to use this blue just in one place. So maybe some of our flowers are blue, because why not? They could be, we don't know. Oh, I do, they're not blue. I'll tell you they're not blue, but we didn't know they're not blue. We, they could easily be some little blue flowers in this scene. I want this yellow back in some of these flowers as well. And to keep that theme, I want some splashes of yellow as well. And then, again, don't want the yellow just in one place. So maybe the bell is yellow. Maybe there's a little yellow up here. And, you know, touch of yellow just in splashes. And I know what you're thinking, if you're thinking the same as me. That was too much in places. That's fine. That's why we paint wet. So look, because we paint wet, we can come back and we can remove, just by taking a dry brush, we can remove, we can smudge, we can basically just correct it when we've uh, not, not quite done what we intended, overdone it a little bit, got a bit enthusiastic with our colours. One more thing, with my green again, with my green, I think a touch of, touch of fun in some of these leaves, a few splashes, and then we'll still leave this negative space, but we can add to the character of this scene, I think. Look at it, it's bright colours, it's splashy, it's bold, it's, it's having fun. And we can add to that by just filling a little bit of sort of paint by numbers, which I often use as a term for what you shouldn't do. But sometimes, you know, it's worth breaking your own rules just to have a bit of fun. 
pop in some, some grass-like shapes here. Maybe these are meant to be bricks, these little bobbles, but maybe they'll do better as little punches of grass. And what you don't want to do, as I always say to myself and on this channel, what you don't want to do is keep going until you wish you'd stopped. So I'm not going to. I'm going to stop there. And that is my little day out in Toesland. If you enjoy, please do consider checking out my free course, brand new free course, 10 days of sketching. The link is below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. And there's a load more sketching outside tutorials in the description below. So check them out as your next video. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.